Welcome to Loving Beyond the I Do Podcast. This power couple is building stronger marriages one day at a time. Talking about real issues on love, relationships, and marriage longevity. Let's break down the barriers and engage in healthy conversation with your hosts, Jason and Tina Marie. Take a seat and buckle up because things are about to get real. Hey, 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 welcome to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Loving Beyond the I Do podcast with your hosts, Jason and (laughs) Marie. It gets longer and longer on every episode. So by the end of next year, I want to hold that for a minute. (laughs) Right. All right, so who do we have in the studio with us today, Jason? We have, who do we have today? <laughs> we have Brian and Tanya. I can't believe Hamilton. What is wrong with you? <laughs> they threw me off with <laughs> And who's behind door number one? <laughs> right. So it's Brian and Tanya Hamilton. Woo! That's why I to the show. Wow. Welcome to the show, guys. Oh, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hope. All right. <laughs> So let's get right into the conversation. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourselves. Okay. Don't don't okay, have to talk can... at once. <laughs> I know, right? So it's like Jason um, over my, here. So myself, I am a mother of four, okay. um, wife to Brian. I just turned thirty nine, so that's pretty big. Brian turns forty on Christmas Day, so that's even bigger. Oh, and um, yeah, I have a background in social work and I did that for 12 years I worked for like social services where you guys are in Canada we call that children's aid society Uh, I worked for abuse shelters as a counselor and a lot of different things like that but um, when we had our fourth child I decided that that life is really crazy and really hectic so I decided to stay home and I opened up my own home daycare and I've been doing that ever since so this is year four so all the kids are in school now, and I have five kids come in as soon as my guys get on the bus and okay. uh, work with them all day. So that's what I'm up to. Ooh, she wants to spend her day with kids. Yes. Ooh, bless you. Yep. Okay. And hers off. Pick up five more. <laughs> okay. okay. So I'm, the stress continues. Yeah, it's funny, right? Because guess what? When they're not your kids, they listen amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that is I true. Know. That I know, is right? so true. Still, but it's still a stress. That I know, right? We. Yeah, something was, we got to figure that out, right? We got to write a book about that. How to get your kids to listen to you that's it. as well Just as listen. other people's yep. kids listen to you. Yeah, right. It's true. And that's an amazing thing. That's so true. And, and I'm going to let you go next, Brian. But um, when I was younger, right, my aunt, every time I went over to her home, she would always have me like wash the walls, do this, do that. Like she would always have me and my sisters doing everything. And it wasn't until I was older that I realized well, her kids wouldn't do it. Right? She couldn't get her kids to do it. So every time we would come over, we basically... The come over to clean? Yeah, we would go to visit, right. but we ended up, like, cleaning her house and doing all the chores. And, you know, and at the time, you know, you don't mind because you're younger. But then you realize just how worthless her kids were. But anyway... <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, the kids, our kids listen, but you know how it goes? It always takes, like, so long to get them to, like, come on, let's go, right? Where the oh, other yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah. Exactly. clean up. Okay, Miss Tanya, let's go clean up. Right? Like, oh my right. goodness. <laughs> exactly. I, I like this, right. yeah. So you don't have to talk to yours 50 times. It's like, oh, they're they're coming over. Let's I'm gonna have them clean up today. All right, Brian, <laughs> go. And it sounds like I'm but so you know what? Because it sounds like I'm saying Brian, but I'm not. I'm saying Brian. So go ahead, you can tell us all about that in case in case I'm mispronouncing your name, and then tell us the story behind it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, my name my name is Brian, like the number nine. That's how I tell people uh, the proper way to say it. It's actually, I was named after my dad, and it's a spelling mistake on his birth certificate that, for whatever reason, my parents decided to pass it on to me. So it's Brian. <laughs> um, the, the, the reason why it's it's actually Brian, my great-grandmother filled out the birth certificate. She's Irish. So from what I, the story that I was told was that she wrote Brian the way that she said it. So, <laughs> yep, yep, somebody yep. with an Irish accent saying Brian. <laughs> so, yeah, so that that's how I got my name. I uh, my my dad went by uh, his middle name for our whole life. I, I you know I I've chosen to go by a first name. I think it's the it's the better alternative of the two. 
<laughs> and, you know, the, the story gets even more interesting than that. He's the only Hamilton out of 13 kids because the wrong name, the wrong last name was also written on his birth certificate. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's the, the name in a nutshell. Hamilton. So, so his sisters and brothers don't have Hamilton? No, their, their last name is all states. That's, the, that's our family name. Oh, wow. And so is he but the oldest I, in the middle or the youngest? He's the oldest. Yeah. But it, okay. I, I think it worked out well because if it weren't for that, my my initials would be BS. So I'm, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take BH. Here come Mr. BS. All right. Yeah, that would be a yeah. good teaser in school, yeah, right? Yeah, boy, you wouldn't make a little of that down. That's hey, a- so just think, you know, next time we go, hey, Mr. BS. I'm like, why would you call him that? that? Right. <laughs> oh, wow. So how long have you guys been married? Uh, so we've been together for 16 years, married for 14 of those uh, 16 years. Oh, nice. So nice. it only took you two years, huh? Yeah. It only took you yeah, two o- years. Yeah, only. It was, uh, I, was, I was pretty broke at the time. It took a while to pay for a wedding. So that's the only reason it was, uh, it, we took two, two years, years to get married. <laughs> I understand that. So even though. Wait a minute. You- who, who made the first move? No. Tanya? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a question. No, you sent the email. Like, so, so, so I guess the, the story goes that we were actually introduced by, uh, by a friend. Okay. So there's a guy I was working with. I was doing security at the time. I was, uh, you know, like, like I said, I was broke at the time. I was making $11 an hour working as a security guard at a mall. And uh, this gentleman who I was working with, his name was Mark. He asked me to be the best man in his wedding after I had known him for like a month. So <laughs> I was like, okay. Well, wh- well Brian, whatever. you're we'll, a great guy. We'll, we'll, People know quality when they see it. <laughs> right. Or he just didn't have any <laughs> friends. <laughs> Sorry. It's- yeah. That's- <laughs> <laughs> We'll go with the first one. Yeah, I said I was like, really? Like you? Okay, you know me for a month, but sure. So uh, you know, I got to know his uh, his young son that he had. I got to know his wife, and his wife actually worked at a shelter for abused women and children with Tanya. And she just came to me after the wedding. She's like, you know what? I I have a friend who would be great for you, a, a coworker. I you know I'd like to introduce you guys. And at first, I guess Tanya wasn't wasn't interested. She showed her some pictures from the wedding, and I guess her friend was visiting her at work that day, and her friend said to her. You know, well, if you don't, if you're not interested in going out with them, I will. And uh, <laughs> so, so from there, it started with an email exchange. We started talking on the phone and then we went on our first date. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was how it all got started for us. Yeah. So I have another question because you said you were broke, right? So you <laughs> wanted to get married. But I ask you this because in today's society, in, in today's how we think, how they think, is that, okay, I'm not established. I don't have money. I want to be with this person. I want to get married, but I don't want to get married until I'm stable, until I can Mm. provide. What do you think? Did you even think about that then, or you just, see, I think we just thought differently back then. So what what were your thoughts? Because you knew you were broke. (laughs) No, I I don't even think it was about being being established, because I still wasn't. But, like, no, when I say broke, I mean, like, I was driving a – a Toyota Tercel that had, ind- I had to do hand signals because my indicators didn't work. Like it, it, it wasn't just that I, you know, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money. Like I, I legitimately was, uh, was struggling financially. So, you know, e- even the smallest wedding does cost some amount of money. Yeah. So, at, you know, so- w- once we came to that realization, we both started working multiple jobs so that we could pay for a wedding without going into debt because that was, that was the other thing. Like I know some people who are divorced and still paying for their wedding which is wow you know, wow yeah. that's seems amazing. really counterintuitive mm-hmm. right <laughs> yeah you know true. why you know why because they don't realize that the real work starts after, after. the i do right the right. wedding yeah. is just right you know the preempt to it yeah. but so tanya you wanted to marry him anyway even though he was broke i have yeah. no money i want to marry you <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's i was just gonna say something about that so i had some friends who were like oh my goodness are you for sure but you know what i was dating somebody before <laughs> and you know when you see like that person who's broke but tries to like pretend that they're like building themselves but you're not seeing any change or any progress? Mm-hmm. I had been there, done that, and that was the difference with Brian. I actually okay. saw the action and I was like, okay, yeah, you're here, but I actually see you're talking, but you're also doing. You're not just like talking, oh yeah, I'm right. gonna have this, that, right. and the next thing, right? And that mm-hmm. was the difference. And just last night, actually, we were in the car. We had went and we just purchased uh, something for our family room because we've done a whole bunch of renos and gave each other a high five. Like, wow, you know, for 16 years ago, this is where we were. And look right. at how much we the built up along the way. Yeah. So I, that was definitely the biggest difference. I just saw and I had this feeling I'm like this guy is legit and he's genuine. He's not just talking. He's doing. So that's where the difference comes in. So it wasn't his charm. 
It was just his potential. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, so he's like going so you see, you're, you're, you're banking on the future. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Woo! Let's help. No. She, she put this, this wish list. I hope that he's going to do all the things he says. So it wasn't the same charm your friend saw on you, right? After he had to pay for that tux, right? He had to pay for the tux no, and all the stuff to be in the wedding. That's right. They took yeah. away from the money. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, so yeah. who, who, who wanted all the kids? Uh, or, or, did, or did you that? equally want... Four kids or however many. Did you guys talk about that yeah. before? Yeah, so we did. Brian actually probably would have gone on a couple more times. Okay. <laughs> we, I Good thing he doesn't. Four. Okay. <laughs> I always said four. We have a 12-year-old son. Then we had twins, and twins run on both of our sides. So we always went early um, at the beginning of pregnancy to find out if we were having okay. twins. Um, so then we got pregnant with twins. They're, they just turned 10. Then there was a big gap in between uh, having our next, and we actually got pregnant with twins again. And we did miscarry. And after that, we got pregnant and we have our five year old son now. Okay. But my thing was like, you know what? Four is enough. <laughs> the chances yeah. of us potentially having twins again, that is way too high. And we are content. So we have three boys, one girl. And that, that's okay. part of it. Also, the kids were all like our eldest. He was nine pounds, two and a half ounces when he was born. The twins were both over seven pounds. They seven, two wow. and seven, 11 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, and then the last big. one, uh, our youngest, he was 11, four. And like, I remember Tanya was like, when she found out how big he was uh, like going into the going into the delivery. Uh, mm -hmm. She was like, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing this again. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. just, they just keep getting bigger and bigger." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's wow. a lot. Wow. Yeah, I thought eight pounds were big. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. I think I think our daughter was nine something, but our boys were like eight fifteen and yeah. eight nine. So yeah. eight pounds nine ounces and eight pounds fifteen ounces, almost nine pounds. Yeah. yeah. Those are, yeah. <laughs> wow. Eleven is big. Eleven is big. Wow. Yeah. God bless. Boy. Yes. So how has it been um, with becoming a mom and yes. pursuing dreams and making marriage work? And now make now that the wedding didn't out didn't outlast you. Right. So how has it been? How has marriage been? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is that we've learned to just like, you know, your show says be real and figure out what works best for us and nobody else. Mm -hmm. So yes, I did my time. I, you know, there were times at the beginning where I was making more than Brian because I just finished university. I got into my career right away and that was fine. And, you know, roles change and times change. So I did it. I was stressed out of my mind every day, you know, <laughs> running out the door. We had a nanny. At, we don't have any family where we live in our city. Right. So, you know, that back and forth, getting home late. And then Brian used to commute. And it was just like after my, our fourth and thinking about going back to work, I'm like, this is just not going to work. Like by the time you pay for, you know, yes. private school, after school, daycare, daycare for an uh, infant. I'm like, what's the point? Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, You're spending your whole paycheck yeah, on exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. And yes, it was definitely hard to give up the title, give up the career and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? I'm good. Like <laughs> I work Monday to Thursday now. I'm off on Fridays. I make my own hours. I'm home. So then it's nice that I get to do what I want to do, enjoy my career still, but then also be available for my family. Right. Absolutely. So there's not that like stress of driving through traffic, getting home, still trying to make dinner, get the kids off to their sports and all that kind of stuff. So it it definitely outweighs. And that, I think that's the biggest thing these days, just trying to balance, you know, that work wherever it is. But then also that family life and all the expectations that are there, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brian, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> and, you, you know, I'll, I'll say to that point, actually, uh, I, I did want Tanya to kind of stay home earlier on. Like I was, I was raised old school. So I know despite the fact that I made less money, I always worked multiple jobs. So yeah. it was at least comparable. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be, you know, I had the mindset of like, I'll work three jobs so I can make like a dollar more at the end of the year, just so I can feel like I, I, I really made that, you know, <laughs> I feel like the breadwinner. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> How much do you make, honey? And yeah. then he goes out and finds a job. I got to yeah. do this one, this one. I got $20 more dollars before I can be there by the end of the year. <laughs> well, you know, we all have our hangups. That's yeah. all right. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Not, that's not a problem. <laughs> but that's a good thing. Yeah, that's, it is. If you want to provide, right? Exactly. exactly. Because some people go, I don't care. Let yeah. her provide. You know, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. The ambition. Okay. So mm -hmm. you always no, want to do it. 
but it, but it benefited though because I got so much experience in my field. So I, I work in security. I've I've worked in the security industry, you know, well since we were since before we were even together. But really worked my way up the industry into some management roles. Now I work for a software company that actually provides a product that uh, I used to use as both as a frontline officer and then in some management roles I was in. And then it's just given me exposure to so many different things, just like working all the jobs that I did because they were all related to the industry. Uh, it's led to teaching opportunities. Uh, it's led to some volunteer leadership opportunities, which have all been, you know, again, they've just really added to my experience, added to, and, 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 you know, it's obviously resulted in, you know, the compensation right. increasing, but it's it's all just, you know, it was all just through the hard work and, and being willing to uh, learn through the process. All right, back to the question, because that was career. We were talking about uh, you wanted her to stay home. <laughs> oh, okay, so, yeah, that. We got the career down. Right, right, we got the career down. Right, right. We're talking about relationships here, so. Yeah, yeah, So sure. software so, companies, you guys have to come in next, but we're talking about relationships. Okay, so you wanted her to stay home early on anyway, but, you know, it was, was at that time, it wasn't comparable. So you waited, and after the fourth one, she was like, yeah, I think I'm going to stay home. Yeah, I think she realized it was just too hard at that point, but I think, thought you know with the first one and you know in hindsight it's probably too early to say okay you you should stay home and uh you know yeah. and, and just keep the house raise the family but uh with the twins and you know towards the end of it when she was pregnant with our last like i could i could just see it like she was stressed every day i was doing a long commute to get to work so you know there there wasn't a chance that if she was running right. late i could be home before her. it would just wasn't right. a possibility yeah so oh, it was you know it kind of fell all on her in that sense like i had to leave i i was out the door before everybody was uh was awake sometimes i was home after the kids were asleep it just you know it was just the the time of life that we were in but right no i i but when it when it i guess things kind of happen i, I you know i'm a believer that things do happen for a reason things happen when they're supposed to mm -hmm. right with, with the right timing so absolutely it, things just kind of fell into place and when you rush it it doesn't work out so you have to do mm -hmm. it at the yes. right time yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I, I would have had now, to do probably four jobs instead of three jobs, and that would have been <laughs> probably too much. It would have taken me out. <laughs> right? Do we? Do you really have? Do we really have a daddy, mom? Because I never see that. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> it would be like this, honey. I'm just gonna sleep at the job tonight. Um, right. right, right yeah. I'm go to this one, then go to this right, one, then go jobs, to this one. Right. Absolutely. You're just changing your shirt. Um, so how did that affect your relationship once Tanya came home? Did, did, I know I know it was a lot of stress during the time when you're trying to take care of the kids, you're trying to provide. Now when Tanya comes home, how did, did how did that help your relationship? Did it change? Oh, did it change? Mm -hmm. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. I would say for one thing, there was definitely a lot less stress for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> because the things the things that uh, you know were stressing Tanya out just really didn't exist right. anymore. And, mm -hmm. and you know, at least from a career perspective. It was like different stressors, but it was, mm -hmm. you know, a different type of stress. And I would probably say not, not as, not nearly as much and not nearly as, uh, as, ta you know, as, as, as draining. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that. Right. Uh, for, for myself, you know, I, I wasn't really, I wasn't worried. I didn't have to rush to get the, like, I didn't have to rush to get home because, you know, I know that she's going to be exhausted, even though I, it's still, still tiring being at home, taking care of four kids. For sure. But it was, again different type of uh different type of tired right? right so it just took a lot of stress off of both of us i think what, oh, yeah. what do you think yeah and i mean like we also save money right because we know yeah. yes. at that point we didn't have a nanny coming in anymore you know so there was also things that shift when you make these type of decisions right so mm -hmm. so many things but um yeah i would just say just that flexibility kids come off the bus they're not going to an after school program they're coming in the house chill out dinner's pretty much ready because during my lunch break I'm getting that kind of stuff done or you know they're all before COVID mm -hmm. we're into sports so it's like you're eating at 5 30 and you're out the door right okay. and sometimes you know they say oh I don't want the daycare kids at home in my playroom <laughs> well <laughs> like do you okay sure but do you want to get to your baseball practice like because that wouldn't be happening if I was still at work till 5 work. There you, you know go. what right. I mean Mm -hmm. So there's that given, you know, there's the give and take of all of this kind of stuff. Or even after school sports, who's picking you up if we're both right. working if we're in town, you, you know? Right. So I yeah. just have to understand that. Are those your sisters and brothers? No, those are my mom's kids. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a bunch of kids in the stands watching. It was like, right. I don't know so why she has to bring them. No, actually, you know what? It, it works really well because the hours that I set are day and my daycare kids come after they go to school, and my daycare kids are gone before my kids come home. So oh, it's nice. yeah, oh, wow, that's so it amazing. actually works out 
yeah, it works out really well that way. So what yeah, so they don't even the... see them. They just <laughs> But they know they there. That's the thing. Exactly. They know. Yeah. Who moved who moved that toy? Who was in my room? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So what were some of the trials and tribulations that you guys had to go through during that time to get to where you are now? And I ask that because so many parents are struggling right now with balancing all of that. Mm -hmm. And COVID actually, to me, was kind of an inconvenience at time, but for parents, it actually gave them the flexibility, like you said, to be at home and take care of their own kids, which brought on another stress. But how did you handle that? So for those parents who are trying to work, trying to come home, trying to cook, trying to go to sports, what were some tools or techniques that you could give them that helped you to get it done, but to also maintain your relationship? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. I know, right? I do that. She asked like four or five questions in one. So pick whichever one you want to answer. Here. I, do, I do the same thing. But I, I do it so some more clarification. So okay. the balance, the balance in giving somebody to say, hey, we were there once and this would this is what we did to help us. Maybe you, it may not be mm -hmm. the same thing, but you can at least try some things. So I guess the biggest thing for me, and I know everybody really well, I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people really get stuck on their title. And sometimes, depending on that season of life, like when you have little kids and that kind of stuff, maybe looking at, okay, yes, I need to make X amount of money. But if, if I step out of this title and maybe take on two part-time jobs, but I can get the kids off to school and be home when they get home, still bring in that money, but I don't have my office. You know what? Sometimes for the sake of your family, for the sake of your marriage, that's what you got to do. You can always mm -hmm. go back, you know, five years when the kids go start JK. And I think that's the biggest thing. Like I ended up right when I decided to give up that job, we had decided to send our kids to a private Christian school. So it was like, oh, well, where's that tuition money coming? That wasn't <laughs> in the budget. Have we not working at all? Right. But then it was like, hey, what's something I could do? Schedule my own time. Oh, I can start a cleaning business. So I started that. And at the time it was a must. Like it was, you know, you gotta, like I'm, I tried to get two houses a week, let's say. Right. Mm -hmm. I, now I actually still have it going. It's no longer a must. I like it just the extra money. And now I have uh, an employee that does stuff for me, you know, cleans an office for me and helps me with other houses. So it works out, but because I mean, with four kids, really, <laughs> is there ever <laughs> like, there's always something. Right. But I yes. think knowing that, there's other options. We just got to look at them. And if you can make, if you can pick something up that's going to work for your family and even for your own mental health, <laughs> then right. maybe it's worth looking at. Good tip. Good tip. How about you, Brian? I think the other <laughs> thing too, you have to really uh, understand what your responsibilities are at work and understand the, the separation. So for myself, when COVID started, I wasn't working from home. I work from home now. I, I switched jobs, but when, I, when it first started, I was still working in the security industry and I was primarily serving healthcare clients. So they were impacted the most by COVID, I would say. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, fir the first week of COVID, I was at like five different hospitals helping get things set up. And then once things got started, it was difficult finding staffing. So I was working from home, uh, but it was, I was working like 16 hour days, even though I was home. Oh, wow. So I was home, right. but I wasn't really here. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, one thing for Tanya was she got used to the fact that I was here and would be like, okay, she, she would expect certain things, but I'm like, I'm, I'm working. I can't, or right, you know, I'm in a meeting right, right now. I, mm -hmm. I can't. And then for me, it was that I, I had to really get, I, I had to really set a cutoff time because if not, like the work was never going to be done. So I, right. you know, I, again, exactly. I'd put in like a 16 hour day, get, you know, get, get eight hours sleep, get, get up the next day and do the same thing. So, it, you know, I guess a little bit of a, a little bit of it was for myself understanding what, that I, the day had to end and having a, a firm end time. And then for mm -hmm. Tanya, just understanding when I was working, that I was working. And, you know, once, once we figured that out, it made things a lot easier. Yeah. Is it a little, a couple of tense moments early on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because and, you're but here. It, so, but yeah. there's going to be tense mm -hmm. moments. And, and that's really true. We have, when we're working from home and I know uh, in the past, we've dealt with couples that one may have been working from home before COVID, which mm -hmm. really put on a stress because, the other spouse is thinking you're at home. Can you do this? Can yeah. you do that? But when I'm at home, I'm really working. working. I'm just right. working from home. So right. we have understanding that term. I'm working just in this location. So yes. how did you get through, even though understanding that, 
Tell us some of the, I know we're going deep right now. We're going to go deep. We're going to get real. Right here, we're going to get real. All right, so. We're going to help some folks out. That's all. Right, right. We're going to help some people out. So what were the arguments? Like, what were the discussions and how how did they get handled? Like, because it's not easy. It's really not easy. So I I saw the light bulb go up. I was like, man. Which one are they talking about here? Which <laughs> argument? Uh, you know, yeah. Which one are we going to say? <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, like, I, I would say now we're in a good groove, but like, uh-huh. good grief, mm-hmm. this is like almost two years into COVID. But when, you know, that first started with the whole balancing at home and things like that, I, you know, I had closed daycare down. So that part was good. I was just focused, but focused on four kids and, you know, getting them online with school and, breaking up fights because guess what? We're all together <laughs> every day, every minute, every hour, right? So then yep. I'm free. Yep. And I'm used to, like, Brian's really hands-on, obviously, when he's not working. Right. So I'm used to, like, Brian, can you come and help me? Like, you know, let's, like, can you help get this one on the computer? And and then right. that's when he would be like, no, I'm in a meeting. I got to, like, get this done, which is totally you- understandable. Yeah, yeah, understandable now. Come right. on, Tanya. How did you feel? You're like, what? <laughs> what? You can't I'm take like, five right? minutes to come in here and help? <laughs> right. That's what she would say. Right. 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 Yeah, but you're here, right? So it did. Once I figured out that, oh, okay, this guy's working, I really can't be depending on him as a parent right now. That was mm-hmm. the biggest thing. Because normally when you're here, that's I can, right? And right. I right. also realized I'm not being fair to him. Because he has a job to do. And right. for me to keep pulling him out of this, it's not, you know, that's not fair. But also then you got to keep the kids quiet because, you know, like, <laughs> I'm going out of the party call. Oh, gosh, <laughs> right. everybody quiet. Well, you know, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to cut in. But, you know, Jason used to do that, too. And I used to say, they, everybody's at home. They understand yeah. there's going to be noise. Yeah. This is life. Like, why am I sitting around in my own office, quiet, trying not to talk? You know, he's like, shh, I'm on a I'm like, okay. shh, I'm on a call. I'm on a call. <laughs> I'm like, we're all at home. If they hear the kids, it's natural. Or, well, we don't have kids, but I'm talking about other people, you know, not little kids. But I'm like, if they hear me talking or hear people doing, like, why do we think we have to still be in that? Because if you were at work and, and stuff was going on in the background, you wouldn't tell the whole office to be quiet. Why do we do that at home? Just yeah, quiet the kids down. I mean, I understand, you know, but okay, go ahead, Tanya. Yeah, that, that was that was definitely a, like, wait a minute, wait, we're gonna have to reevaluate wait, this. Was that one of our problems, babe? Nah, oh, okay. I, I right. shut that down real fast. I'm like, we're at home. If they hear me, they need to expect it. So I put my little disclaimer out there before the meeting started. I said, guys, if you hear a little something in the background, it's my wife. It's, it's my wife. So right. just it's, just go know. with it. All right. So he he has oh, you. Shh, I'm on an important call. Keep the kids, and you're like. Yeah, so you're I, like, yeah, I so we got that all figured out. And you know what? <laughs> it also helped that school was really organized. So once they were on, for the most part, I was good that way, okay. being track of my little guy. The biggest one where I had to jump in was like, okay, listen, like it's 5 30 and you're still on, or after right. you put the kids to bed back on, you know, that was the conversation right. of, okay, you know. Like, yep. I know it's here and it's convenient. That's, we got to draw the line there because tomorrow's the new day, right? Um, I think that was the biggest one too. What was yeah, the yeah, conversation? Was the there, there, there was well, definitely uh, an element of me jumping back on afterwards. But, um, wow. you know, for me, I had to come to the realization that, and, and you know, I, I've had to come to this realization before. So maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a slow learner. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, had to, I had to think, you know what, at the end of the day, if I'm not available for this company, they're going to replace me, right? If I, if I absolutely crossing the street, get hit by a bus tomorrow, they might send Tanya flowers or something, but that's it. Right. right. Fruit exactly. basket. Um, Fruit but basket. It, yeah. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I, I know I'm not replaceable to my family. Yeah. So, right. Right. You know, I, you just have to kind of shift priorities and, and understand what's really important. Yeah. How did the conversation go? So, so we're also helping people communicate, right? So, yeah. So it was <clears throat> definitely after an evening of being, frustrated or probably you know maybe like putting kids to bed or on my own or somebody having a tantrum something like that where it was like okay (laughs) this is not working here (laughs) Tanya you you did not say we need to talk did you you didn't say that right (laughs) okay (laughs) no it was probably there's usually not a lead in in those situations (laughs) as soon as there's there's an opportune time we're gonna have a conversation we're we're pretty candid with each other he's always on he's like oh this is one of those moments (laughs) yeah Right. And she, she has no lead in. Thing, 
<laughs> the funny thing is, it very well could have been while I was like brushing somebody's teeth and I, you know, there's no yelling or anything. It was just like, okay, so this whole working late is not working, right? As I'm like <laughs> brushing teeth and like putting somebody in bed for the fifth time. I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to work anywhere. So we'll have to figure it out later. But for now, I need you up here. Yeah. So I, I guess there actually is a lead in. The lead in is, okay, that's, that's. <laughs> <laughs> now, that you, now that you think back, right? right? Now that you think back on all of, so whenever you hear, okay, you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh. here it comes. Yeah, in that tone, yeah. Yeah. O- okay with not it's not responding to anything. It's starting a conversation. So that's when it's a that's when it's a problem. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and so how did the conversation go for you, Brian? What were you, what were you thinking? Like you were like, were you initially saying, yeah, you're right? Or did it like you said, you're a slow learner, like like a few men, not all men. But, yeah. you know, how do I say you, that? You might right? have to tell me a couple of times. <laughs> well, that's for well, sure. Well, why I say that is because. They seem not well. I guess it's equal mm-hmm. when you're when you're so um, into your work and you know that 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 it, it like you said it would never end. Work would never end. You could right. always be online doing it. Mm-hmm. How do you talk to those professionals out there that are have those couples where they have a professional that's always online? It's always work. It's always work. It's always work to get them to see that balance because not everybody sees what you saw. You're right. I need to be able to be available to you when I am here. I can't give my entire time to them. Some people don't see that. What what well, what would you tell them? I think honestly it really depends on the person. Like my family is really important to me. My family comes first. That's probably not necessarily the case with some people. When you look at Could some be. high level CEOs, you know right. people who do have to work pretty much nonstop in order to maintain things, you know, family might be something that they're going to spend time on later. You know, it's or it's just not something that's as important to them. And, and, and I think, think there's seasons be? of life where that, I I think it should be. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for another person though. Right, 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 right. I can, I can only speak to my experience. And I, you know, that's just, that's, that's how I feel. I, I think family should be first, but I think in, in to some people, their career is more important and mm-hmm. you know, it is that. what it is, but I think you have to, you have to marry correctly in that situation. You have to make sure that your significant other understands that, you know, you're going to be working versus getting to a dance recital or getting to a baseball game or whatever. Right. So mm-hmm. that needs to be established. And that, that can't be something that, um, that comes later on. That's something that you probably need to figure out, you know, before you have, at least before you have kids. Mm-hmm. I like that. Good conversation, right? I like that. that. You that, have to marry correctly. I mean, that is key. Well, as Tanya said, sometimes we look at titles and money. Yes. So we think mm-hmm. that's marrying correctly. Yeah. So right. so we have to put our values on the table, but that leads me to the to the um going into so many times people are um not talking about that mm-hmm. before marriage. Right. You know, you fall in love or you know, you get together, hopefully you fall in love, I don't know. Some people fall in love with the person, some people fall in love with the title. Yeah. So, you know, you get together, you get married and those conversations aren't being had. Right. And that's why these merit issues in marriage are coming up later Mm -hmm. and then we don't know how to handle them because then it becomes a conversation of well you knew this before we got married you you knew this before we had kids right so having conversations about what is important what are we looking to for the future Mm -hmm. yeah my you know want to raise the kids are you going to be active in their lives not just anticipating that that you're going to do that or just not just providing right so many Mm -hmm. times you know the man is just providing and we have a good lifestyle but Oftentimes we miss the person. It's the person that's important that we sometimes forget in relationships. Mm-hmm. And that was mm-hmm. a key point, Tanya, when you said so many people are afraid to give up the title. Yes. Yeah. Right. You, you know, I well because prestige well, you are, come with that. Right. I mean, right. On, you are director of you are director of X Y Z. You're gonna go home and watch kids now. You know the yeah. conversations you can just hear them, but it's not about the title. It's about which you can see. It's about the family, right? Mm-hmm. It's about yeah. the family. Making decisions now that are going to impact your lives years to come. Because now that one decision has strengthened your relationship, not only with your wife and your husband, but with your kids. Now you're both there being able to be present parents. So how does... You're like you wanted to say something. No, no, go ahead, baby. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, you're on the road right now. Go ahead. I'm about to put some money in the till here. Go all ahead. Right, all right. So I'm going to... So you guys just, just lead us through. Like, give us some information. Just... Whatever you want to talk about for parents that are, um, you know what, for couples, for couples that Mm -hmm. are struggling right now, struggling to be able to communicate, struggling and not being able to get that connection. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. So I, 
I think the, one of the biggest things we do, and it's funny, I think I mentioned it the other day, but I'm like, you know, you str- you have strategic planning meetings in the office, in the boardroom. Absolutely. You gotta have those type of planning meetings in your marriage. And I know it sounds weird, but guess no, what? No, it sounds wonderful. Sounds no. great. Right? Sounds like you what more we to, need to do. Right? Because you you got to have some direction as to where you want to go. And guess what? It's going to change year by year. Like now what we're doing this year isn't what we were thinking 14 years ago. 14 years ago, we were thinking like, we got to pay rent. And like one day, hopefully we can buy one house, let alone two or, or whatever, right? So I, you got just that open talk. And sometimes it's not even sitting down. Like sometimes Brian will come upstairs for a break and it's like, Oh, this is what I was thinking. Blah, 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 blah. Just throwing it out there, you know, like we should look mm-hmm. into this next. And okay, cool. It's not necessarily sitting at a board table. We right. know that, right? right. But right. it is that open, ongoing conversation because if you aren't on the same page, then that's obviously going to cause a problem. You got X amount of money sitting in your bank account. One person thinks it would be amazing to go on a vacation, and the other person thinks, let's purchase a, uh, you know, a rental property that's a problem. You got to figure it out. Like, what are we going to do? What's the best option here? Right. And, uh, I think another thing too, is just, uh, not wanting to one up each other. Right. So again, going back when I was making more at the time, it was never a, okay, I'm sure for Brian, you know, as, as the man, you know, he, he did his best to keep going, but guess what? Now I get to sit back and he's doing his thing. And, you know, he's he provides obviously way more than me in the home, right? But you know your role and it's mm-hmm. not a one-upping situation. Like you right. stay in your lane, you're amazing at this. And you stay in this lane, you're amazing at this. And together, we're just going to keep going, right? And I, w- I would say the other thing too is you also have to understand that you're not going to get everything that you want <laughs> necessarily in your relationship. Like you have to understand that your husband or wife isn't perfect, but neither are you. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. that's right. You know, there is a, there is a level of, I guess I, I wouldn't even say compromise. I don't like to, I don't like to think of it as compromise, but you, you know, you're, you're accepting the person as they are yep. uh, and, yeah. and they're doing the same. So th- there are going to be certain things that, uh, that you're not going to get out of the relationship and you just have to understand that you have to understand, you know, and understand as well that you know that your significant other is probably uh, not getting everything they want either and it, at certain times like obviously i think our relationship is great and you know for the most part i think i, I think we meet each other's needs for sure right but you know I, i'm sure there's things that tanya does that annoy me that annoy her <laughs> and, <laughs> you know there's there's things that there's things that she does that annoy me too but you know it's sure you, you just you have to, to say that really fast. Yeah. You try to say that really fast. There's things she says in my mid right? <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll drag it out like I'm Jason at the start of the show. She does things that annoy me as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's funny that you say that. So the whole purpose of our podcast is really to talk about things that we don't talk about in relationships, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Giving people tools and techniques that can make it work. And when you said, you know, you have strategic me- meetings at work, why don't we have them at home? That's one of the things that I think is important. Being Very. able to plan. You know, yeah. as you know, so so often we get the I do and it's nothing after that. Right. And then you're wondering why, well, what happened to our relationship? Why is it bad? Why are we not physically you, attracted to anyone, each other anymore? Why are we never not built intimate? It. You never built your relationship. You just said, I do, and you just yeah. let your relationship turn into whatever it is. You know, your life is whatever it is at that point. But having meetings and getting some direction, or which I planning. like what you said, just yeah. having some direction in your marriage. That's key. You and have like, to know where you're going. You know, well, how would you like just getting in a car with your, with your significant other? And don't go anywhere. And that's kind of like what happens after a while exactly. if you don't have any directions. Yeah. So if you start out and you have these meetings, which I think are key, mm-hmm. you know, meetings, strategic, you can call it whatever, <laughs> love talk, whatever you need to call it. You need to you need to have these type of discussions yeah. uh, to see where you're going with your relationship. Yeah, people, yeah, it, I think we part of it is just understanding that really we have to do things, same thing in marriage. That, that we do for our careers, that we mm-hmm. do for school, that we do for everything else besides our relationship. We have to 
agree. We have to um, talk. We have to keep it on the right track. We have to keep pouring into it. We have to get the education to make our relationships better. Right. Otherwise, they're just, yep. I mean, nothing maintains itself. No matter what you have, when it's new, it's going to be great and spanky yeah, and beautiful. Yeah, like that new car. Yeah, Right, baby. if you don't yeah. maintain it, it's not, it's not going to do what it used to do. Right. And mm -hmm. that's what we right. have to understand in our relationships. And that's real talk. You can't get married and just let life happen because if you're not active in your marriage, you're not going to like the outcome. No. Right? right? What do we have to do with marriages? Yeah. What do we say, baby? Taking what? Uh, taking marriages off cruise control. Take them off cruise control. Mm -hmm. yeah. So many times you get married, you push the button. All right, I'm married now. Yep. And we just yep. think everything's going to fall into place. And we go by what we learn or what we've seen, you know, coming up. That's true, you know, too. Whatever yeah. we, we, we were raised with, that's okay. Well, you know, I'll do this and they'll do that. So. Mm -hmm. so have you guys taken any courses or relationships or read any books to help your marriage or you know, some people look good, but we didn't have to do that, right? Not that you had to. You know, Jason, uh, just a little bit here and there, but have, yeah. have you guys done that? What do you think about that? Uh, we did premarital counseling. Okay. In a, Wonderful. Of course, I think that's a plus. Church. Yeah, I was saying, um, we were talking about that the other day with another couple, and uh, that's so big. Whether you're in a church or not, like with a right. counselor, somebody. Yes. Like, it, to me, that's a must. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because it opened up so much good, good information for us, like things that we hadn't discussed. And we, you know, right. back when you're dating and you stay on the phone till like, right, right, you know, like, exactly. Yeah, you thought you've discussed everything, but you really <laughs> yeah. haven't. Yeah, I'm so talking about that. Was, yeah. <laughs> so right. that was good. We haven't done really any courses like since we've been married, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I definitely think it's good to do. Um, I'm not the biggest reader, so we have started reading some books, and then I fall off. Yeah, Brian keeps you know they have Audible. Like, These are all his books. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, yeah. You she, know she, they have she Audible. Just, she just learned, she just learned <laughs> know, about Audible. I've been using okay. it for years, but... Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I have gotten into Audible. I have gotten into... Yeah. So no, Audible, I you might... It's, it's, I might have to get a plug from Audible, but I know because yeah. when, I, with, when our kids were younger and we didn't have a lot of time, I would just play them in the car. So on the yeah. way to the game, on the way back, and sometimes I would play with my ears so that everybody wouldn't have to, you know, hear or whatever. So that is a good way to feel that time, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. doing running around things. You, you can listen to it yourself. The book, the, I actually now I actually listen to it while I'm working out. So while yeah. I'm working out, I'll put it in instead of listening to music, stuff that I really need to know or want to know or want to read. I'll just do it in the gym. I think mm -hmm. I think one of the other things about making a, um, a successful marriage is self improvement. So yeah. Yeah. if I can become a better version of myself, I can be a better partner in my marriage. Absolutely. Yes. So that's the key. So if I can work on me, <clears throat> then there it is, and that's what we need to do. You can't say, "Hey, there's nothing wrong with me." It's you know that's per that person. No, I can become better. I mean, I know my shortcomings. You know, I know I like to <laughs> leave the plate on the on the table. I know that, baby. So you have to bring that up. <laughs> you know, so I, I know my shortcomings. So if I can become better, I could, you know, not upset her into some of the things that I do. And that's just not giving in to her. That's just making me better. And if we look oh, at 100%. it differently, like this is for me and not for her. Or right. vice it versa. Change our perspective of why right. we're doing things, right. right? And then you can you can you can stop all that, and that can um, that can just uh, eliminate a bunch of uh, disagreements. So, yeah, uh, become yeah. better. Uh, just become a better person. So, Tanya, you uh, started reading more because of him, because of Brian. Uh, so still the reading isn't like, uh, great. I'll say she started. I, I wouldn't say like, it, 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 you know, when, when, when the, the benchmark is zero, it's easy to say more, but yeah, she, she, she started reading. I, I think, you know, before we got married, I had, uh, bought both of us a copy of love and respect. Um, I read it. Uh, so I, I picked up some from there. I, I kind of told her what it was about because again, you know, it wasn't not, not, not a big reader because but, there was. <laughs> Because that, uh, what do they call it? Cynosis, cynosis or whatever. What is that when you can lay on it and you, it just goes just into your head? Right. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't yeah, working. Learn through osmosis, yeah. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so so there's that. Uh, so Love and Respect was uh, was a good book. Um, it was by Dr. Emerson Egrich. Uh, Five Love Languages. Five Love Languages. I, I never read that one. Oh, but yeah. you, you did buy both of us a copy of it. Yeah. And I, I, I already learned from the first experience. So I was like, I'm... <laughs> 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the book report for her. I'll, I'll wait until we're ready to read so it you together. Didn't do it. But, you didn't read it because you didn't want to tell her what it was, oh. right? You was like, no, read it for yourself. Oh, yeah, she, but that, I, but you, I knew what the ploy was. She she bought it and she bought it for both of us. But I had already done this and I I knew that the reading didn't happen last time. So I was like, okay, what what was what did you get from the first chapter? And when there was nothing, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not I'm gonna, not gonna, do gonna this, indulge. Uh, so did you read it, Tanya? The, I read some, most of it, not okay. all of it. All right. But you know, I got, I got what the five love languages were, and that was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> there you but go. Did you but guys I, take? The, so you guys haven't taken the test. At the end, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't get, I didn't get far enough to know there was a test. Okay, okay. so yeah. you can look yeah. up. At the end yeah, of the book, yeah. there's, a, there's a test, so, and it tells so, you what your love language is. So podcast homework: finish yeah. the book. Yeah. Take the there test. Take the test. You know there what? You Even if you don't finish the book, well, mm-hmm. the book, I think the book is very insightful as it to is. why he says what he says. It's, mm-hmm. it's very, and you yeah. can actually, yeah. actually, it's on Audible as well. Mm-hmm. You know, because yep. I listen to it every now and again because I think I was telling someone about it and I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about because I couldn't remember. It had been so mm-hmm. long ago. Mm-hmm. I was like, what, what did that one do? <laughs> but um, uh, take the test yep. and then it makes it even better. So we're not going to give anything mm-hmm. more than that. So, so we need two yep, plugs. We need to go. contact the five love languages, and we need actually it's it, we you know. Well, anyway, yep. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so you didn't the, take the, the test. That, yeah, I'd say the biggest thing though, the the most valuable book for me was the Bible in terms of just knowing how to be a husband and a father. Uh, again, I actually when my when our eldest was born, Josiah, yeah, you know, somebody from work had. Uh, kind of quoted me as like a Bible expert. And I'm like, I am definitely not a Bible expert, but <laughs> I had, there was this expectation at work and I'm like, I have a son coming. So that was actually the first time I sat down and read the, the Bible cover to cover and tried to learn as much as I can before he was born. So okay. actually I remember when uh, we were, when you were in labor, I was, or not in labor, but we were, we were at the hospital and, you know, waiting for things to happen. I was, I was reading then too. I was, I was, you know, starting my second time through, but I think I, that's been the most valuable the Bible book. front to back. Yeah, several times, yeah. Yeah, I'm still, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Never the yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. So, so then I try. Then I, then never, I try. Never the back. Usually, then I, usually, usually it's never the front. People stay away from the Old Testament, right? And, no, and read, no, I, I just I like don't make it the all front. the way through. Yeah. But one yeah. day I am. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But there's. No, you know what? Matthew my bucket and Genesis, list. I think, are the most read books. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, wow. Okay. People, so I'm not, I'm not even going to ask Tanya. So I already know. <laughs> Tanya, Tanya didn't get from the back <laughs> <laughs> but we can't we can't say that too we can't say that too loud do the kids know that mom doesn't like to read because if they do we, we have to deploy Actually, that myth. The, the great the great thing is they all enjoy reading so that part is nice and I just uh keep encouraging them there you go <laughs> all right yeah I told yeah, all my kids funny, this funny thing go ahead so I was just gonna say funny thing one, one of the things I remember when we were uh, when we were still dating and Tanya was finishing off her university degree she's like when we have kids, please don't tell them my like this is my effort in school. I I, I didn't really like school. <laughs> it was one of those a, like you got to do it to get it done and like yeah. get the job you want. But I did yeah, not that, like enjoy it. Right. That was it. She needed the degree for for the work that she wanted right, to do, and that right. was yeah. I'm so going back like, because I'm, they're forcing she, me to. But just yeah. no. I'm doing I'm doing what I need to, and that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> right. I need if I need a if I need a sixty to pass, don't expect me to get a sixty one. That's <laughs> Wow, that's the total opposite over uh, here. Yeah, I always tell my kids. Yeah, if, if they, I, I did. Yeah, you, you no, just. No, I was did. gonna say I did not pull like the stay up till five a.m. That was not me. <laughs> and and I'm always giving extra. Yeah. So if if, if the just, highest you can get is a hundred, yeah. I'm definitely gonna strive for 125. Yep. Like that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my that's kids would come home with a 98, and 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 you know it was a joke. It but was then funny. when they got in college, and you know they. Or when actually when I went back to college and I was like, oh my God, I got a ninety, whatever. You know, if I didn't get a hundred, they were like, you can do better. You can do. <laughs> that, that was my that was my turn. Right. You can do better. If it's not a one hundred, you can do better. But yeah, that was funny. it's not for everybody, right? Yeah. But it it just it just shows them that not no no offense to you, Tanya, but you know, it just shows them that you oh, can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like don't settle for what you've gotten. Like just strive to for, sure. for, for more. You know, and so that was really what I was trying to encourage that. Don't be happy with where you are. Always look to, okay, yeah, you passed. Yeah, you understood it. Mm-hmm. But always, okay, next time I'm going to strive to understand it more or study a little harder to just surpass where I'm at. Otherwise, we fall into mediocrity. Just in terms yeah. of the kids. Under, understanding them, pushing them to understand. Strive for more. You know, another thing is I always told them, you know, which my son came back and told me, don't accept no for an answer. 
You know, so mm-hmm. often we go to people and we ask mm-hmm. at, at the university, at work, at whatever, the fir- at, at the grocery store, at the doctor's office, no matter, right? You ask a question because either they're too lazy to find the answer or they've never had that question asked. They don't know. So they say, oh, well, no, we can't do that or you can't do that. Don't accept no for an answer because mm-hmm. there is, th- 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 there's no question in this world that can't be answered. It's just, a, it's just a matter of effort. Do you want to put the effort in? It's just like our relationships. Do you want to put the effort in to make our relationships better, right? Do you want to, well, we can't compromise. We can't get along. We can't, you know. You can always you find can. someone. It's who are both of you willing to put the effort in. That's where the difference is. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, even with the kids, right, and, you know, giving your best effort. It's interesting because when you have four kids that are at all different learning levels and capabilities and like that, that's our thing. It's one, give your best effort Mm -hmm. because when you have the one child who can easily get an A, but not really study much. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we have that. You're you're still not giving your best effort. Yeah. Right. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. Give your best effort there. But then when you have a child who struggles academically and if this is your best effort, then we're good with that. Yep. Right. Right. Exactly. So it it is interesting that how, you know, even when, whether it's parenting or relationships that yeah, always striving to do better. However, that's going to look for each person. And that's what I mean by we need to apply all the other things in our life to our relationship. We don't do that. All those other things can be, we can do the, the things that we do at work, you know, with our family, whatever, all those things that we do that makes it work. We can do the same thing in our relationship. And we just don't, we don't relate the two, which we should. We, we, we can, mm-hmm. if, if we're at work and our boss wants to get, you know, promote us, what do they make us do? They make us go to school, get right. education, right? Yeah. We can do that same thing in our marriage. If it isn't working and we're not moving up, we can get educated on what we're doing wrong. So what, what mm-hmm. were the... Um... I got a question. Okay. Brian, what do yes. you enjoy about being a father? What is one of your... You know, most exciting things. Yeah, look at it. He kind of lit up. When I, <laughs> but you know, what what do you what do you? Because I, I enjoy so many things about raising the kids and 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 instilling in them and doing so much. What do you enjoy about just being a father? I think it's it's really just learning their personalities and seeing you know the unique individuals that they are, because all four of them are very different. You know, the twins again kind of <laughs> polar opposites in a lot of ways. And, but okay. they, there's so many similarities too. So it's really just seeing how their personalities fit and seeing how we're similar. Like they, I have some kind of similarity with all of them, mm-hmm. but it's, but all of them are different, right? right. It, it's, it's just interesting kind of seeing how their personalities work, seeing what they pick up from me and, what- <laughs> and it, no, but like seeing, seeing how like they, there's some kind of behavior or characteristic that's really dominant for them. That's right. maybe strong for me, but not that dominant, but I really see it in them. Mm-hmm. So re- really seeing that in all four of them is really interesting because again, it's, you know, it's that, that piece of you that's, you know, that's a, now a, a living, breathing human being. It's, uh, you know, that, that's just really, that's just kind of a really cool thing in itself. Mm-hmm. But I, I would say that's probably the, the most, just seeing them grow a, a, into their, you know, to the person that they, that they are. Okay. Wonderful. Well, wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. Anything else you guys want to touch on? Well, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, one, okay. one thing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm both, <laughs> okay. We got, we got Back two. To you. Right. Okay. All right. Well, Tanya, what do you enjoy about being? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just yeah. thought it was about the dad. I'm it sorry. It was. It was. But then I didn't want to leave mom out I mean, there. You know you what I'm saying? She do a lot. We of, enjoy know. everything. We, right. don't, we don't even right. remember what we enjoy because we have so many things to do. But I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. So, what do you enjoy most about just being a mom? Yeah, I would say the big, like watching them grow. Obviously, that's big. But watching them overcome different struggles or pick up new things. Um, you know, like even from baby, right? You know, mm-hmm. like all those milestones, those are always so right. special. But now parenting between ages of five to 12, it's it can be polar opposite, right? So right. I have, we have Absolutely. somebody who's like a preteen. So somebody who's very quiet and stuff like that. So when he's willing to open up and share, that's amazing. Or, you know, like ask right. me, Hey, does this look good? You know, those are the things that it's like, okay, 
you know, all is well in the world. And then the five-year-old, when he's still getting to experience things that the other guys think, oh, well, he's such a baby, right? But really, <laughs> he's five. And even though for the majority of the kids in our house, you know, they're way past that stage, mm-hmm. it's still like, okay, you're getting to experience this stuff for the first time. So that's pretty special too. That's wonderful. Yeah, it, actually, one thing you mentioned earlier, Jason, was uh, just the self-improvement piece and how that's going to help you be a better spouse and a, be- a better parent overall as well. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things I've learned a lot from is just like the leadership training I've done. Uh, and, and then the biggest thing is those disc assessments and learning the communication mm-hmm. styles of other people. Yeah. I think that's been really helpful because everybody has a different communication style. Like <laughs> yes. I know, yes. and, and, and you know, for, for your relationship, again, you can apply a lot of those things to your relationship as well, but the communication styles is a huge one because I know, you know, it helped me understand Tanya a little bit more learning about the communication styles and understand myself really. But I know if I ask a yes or no question, probably 70% of the time, it's not going to be a yes or no answer. Oh. And I'm going to be just waiting for, you know, so now I, I know the, the, the I'm going to get my answer at the end of <laughs> the monologue. But, <laughs> but I have to, under, like, I just have to understand that. that's her communication style. And, and, you know, if I, if I do need an answer right away, I need to like, kind of put that up front. Like, I just need to know yes or no. Yeah this right so just i don't need understanding all, that and for yeah. her find, find a <laughs> nice way to say his face where yeah i can tell by his face where he's like like come on <laughs> get it out and i'm like okay yeah well, like i said we we, we're, we can be pretty we have a lot of candor we can be pretty candid with each other yeah, so I'm like, yeah. I, I, like i really just need the answer yeah right. <laughs> so, so she doesn't yeah, like no school time. but she likes dissertations Right, she doesn't like school, but she likes a long dissertation. And then she comes. You're going to hear me out, right? right? I'm going to get my point across before I give you your answer. Then it's the conclusion: (laughs) yes or no. He's like, wow, wow, yeah, amazing. (laughs) So maybe you should be a writer instead of a reader. There you go. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say, there's a, one of our guests, um, I don't know if you guys had, have had the talk with your children um, about sex and their body and teaching them about their body and respecting their, val- their, their values in life along mm-hmm. with, you know, the sexual origin. And um, the guest mm-hmm. was, uh, it was to teach her kids from birth until... 18. 18. And it's called the birthday book. And so, and it, it oh, goes... Okay. it birthday goes. Suit. No, the birthday book. Oh, the birthday suit. Oh, the birthday suit book. Oh, yeah. Okay, the mm-hmm. birthday suit book. Okay. Because yeah. you know you say you your birthday suit. Okay. Yeah, you're yeah. right. So on your on your birthday, mm-hmm. you would have this conversation about whatever part of, of your the body. book of the book of the, the book. book. So her book goes from and it's age appropriate. Right. And she. Oh, it have to mm-hmm. be going from right. right. Yeah. So, but you only you only deal with one thing a year. And what you do is you build around that thing. So what if, if you say, you know, oh, you're going to yeah. talk about, you know, your arm or whatever. Um, so you, you talk of, about yeah. that the whole entire year and the whole theme is around that understanding this, that and the other. So and she goes through this because she was a former um, health teacher and she goes through okay. this because, she's you know, in, in high school. So by the time the kids got to high school, they didn't know anything about sex ed or anything like that. They thought they knew. Right. So this way she's like. As a teacher, I'm I'm going to just tell these kids or tell parents how to have this conversation with their kids. It was, you know, it was a a good read. So, I mean, and I say I think it would have been good for us as parents, but you know, too late. It was never really too late. Yeah, yeah, but they work on the grandkids, but yeah, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) whenever they come. (laughs) So I just thought, you know, and and so you can kind of, if you want to look at it, the the birthday suit book. Yeah, and it's just Mm -hmm. uh, being able to. help our kids to respect and understand their bodies yeah. so that they're not looking for their peers to tell them later in life. Right. Plus putting yeah. your values within your family, you know, helping them instill those, those values as they get older. Yep. Just something, you know, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, yeah. that was, yeah. yeah. Having, having young kids. No, I, that I one. Think that, yeah, yeah, we no, don't that's, normally that's have really that. big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's really big just to have those conversations and be open. Um, Being on like I used to do sexual abuse cases when I worked at Children's Aid. Right. Mm -hmm. And there were so many times I would be interviewing a child and they wouldn't even know the proper name to their vagina or their penis. Exactly. Yep. And like I get why the parents would do that. But that was something I took as like, no, like we're going to be open. You can be open and appropriate all at the same time. Right. Like. Um, but to be able to teach and like, this is why we do this. This is why we don't do this. This is, you know, just so many different things because I mean, like, hello, look at what kids are dealing with yes, <laughs> right yes, now yes. compared yeah. to what we were, um, right, you absolutely. know, being naive 
is like the worst thing I think a parent could do in 2021. Yeah. Right. So I, I think that's a great idea. I like that. Yeah. yeah and I'm glad, yeah. It, just it, like it, you it, said, it was for the simple fact of teaching our kids the, the, the proper name of certain parts of our body. Yeah. And it's not, yeah. it's, and it's not age. Right. So you can have 16 year olds that don't, don't know, know the names and the parts yeah. of their bodies. Right. Or, yeah. so she, she gave the example that she was it, teaching, teaching in high school, right? <laughs> teaching in high school. And yeah. they're talking about ovulation. Uh, right. Ov- ovulation. One was, and so when she has, you know, her, she releases her eggs every month. <laughs> and so a student raised his hand and said, so girls have eggs like chickens. Like, you know, like, oh you, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Because you're saying they release their eggs and, you know, so yeah. just right. under, yeah. helping. But he just didn't, <clears throat> the thing was, he just didn't know. Well, I you mean, don't well, know, he you really don't know. thought that that was the case. Yeah, and I think that that was an actually great book for kids, yeah. you know, talking about, like you said, uh, just teaching them knowledge is power. And so as opposed oh, sure. to, like you said, you said, well, some parents don't talk about it, one, because they don't know, mm-hmm. or they don't talk about it because they're uncomfortable with it. But this is right. a part of who we are. So instilling those values in our kids early. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. that was a really great book that that's definitely well needed. Yep, for sure. for sure. All right. So as we start to wind down, is there anything that you guys like to share or leave our audience with anything? Actually, this has been great anyway. Yeah, biggest yeah. tip, biggest tip. Give yeah. us one of those yeah. last big, huge tips that someone oh, yeah. can go away with. I, I would say for someone who's planning to get married, uh, focus more on the marriage when you're doing your planning than on the wedding. I see far too many people who spend so much time planning this big extravagant wedding and a year later they're divorced. So yeah, focus, focus more on that. Um, make sure that you communicate, make sure that you have conversations, uncomfortable conversations before you're married. You know, I, again, I, I know somebody, uh, you know, without mentioning names that was engaged and then it, they had to call it off because they realized the one person didn't want to have kids, but they hadn't had that discussion before. So wow. talk wow. about yep. family, talk about finances, Yes. talk about faith, talk about, yes. you know, talk all, about debt. All of, all of those <laughs> yeah. things are important. Uh, and yes. the, 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 I guess the last thing I'll say before I turn over to you is make sure that you make time for each other. We did talk about this already, but mm-hmm. you know, we do date nights and one nice. of the rules is we don't, we don't talk about the kids. Right? Okay, we, good. Yeah, you shouldn't because you, you, well, you don't date. have to, you don't have to wind it down. Go ahead. You can go into date night if you want to and what you guys do. You can go into, if you, if you like, if you, you know, we allow you to talk if you want to go into what you guys do and how you make the romance, you know, still there. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is once your kids are gone, it's just the two of you. And if you've spent the last 20 some odd years focusing on them, I, I think you're setting yourself up for failure. So sure. yeah, just take the time. That's just one of the things we do is the date nights, whether it's, you know, something that's, it can be something simple, especially right now. It's depending on where you live geographically, it could be challenging right. to get out to some places. Right. So yeah, just, just making the time, even if it's something simple, uh, we, you know, we're in a fortunate situation where we have a really great family that lives next door to us who has four kids as well. And we'll just take turns babysitting so that, you know, we can uh, each get out for a date night. So Wonderful. yeah, just make the time for each other. I said, yeah. make the time, make the time. And I mean, now our oldest is babysitting age. So that's amazing. And, you know, <laughs> we, we have those little security cameras we've set up around so we can always communicate. It makes me feel at ease. Just like, okay, everybody's good. Cause right. you know, it's like just that beginning stage of babysitting. But yep. um, so yeah, we're, we're really getting to that more freedom. But for me, I think be real, be real with each other, be real with yourself laugh we, we laugh a ton but then like if you're mad at each other and frustrated you're frustrated and you know what like you can also be frustrated and mad in front of your kids it's all the way how it comes down i yeah. think that's really important too like don't live a life where it's all closed behind closed doors and then one day when something blows up your kids don't know what the heck is happening right right, right. like right. our son was like oh my goodness you guys are fighting i'm like this is not fighting. Keep in mind, I work with <laughs> domestic violence cases. This is an argument, child. This is, we're frustrated with something and that's okay. Just like how I get frustrated with you, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's important for them to see and then also see how we problem solve because like, that's just the reality of life, right? But yeah, laugh, enjoy. I mean, it, it's nothing better than celebrating wins with your partner who has been alongside of you, whether it's a win, it's an individual win or whether right. it's one together. Absolutely. I think another thing people probably uh, aren't comfortable talking about is how do you break a tie? <laughs> if you don't agree on something as a couple, right. how are you yeah. going to figure that out? Yeah. It's another important piece. There's no advice back there. 
You're just gonna give him that problem. <laughs> so how do you how do you figure out a tie? He, he left us with the problem. Right, so he's yeah, like cliffhanger. Yeah. Hey guys, you got to fight about this. All right, you got to wait for part two to get you know find out. <laughs> so so no, what do you guys? There, there, I think there, there's situations where one of you has to be the decision maker, and you know the other well the other ones. If you disagree, somebody's gonna have to break a tie because mm-hmm. you don't have a you don't have a third party to come in and, and arbitrate for you. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to make a decision and the other person's going to have to be okay with that. Yeah. Now, so how do we does decide? that change from situation to situation or you just always yeah. the tiebreaker? It can. Like yeah, if, if we, so. if we don't agree on say something that we're going to buy for the house for decor, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Tanya's going to break the tie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but there, there's other things where I'm going to be the one who breaks the tie. Right. And it's just having that understanding. Or so, even like the really important things of like, you know, should we send the kids to this school or should we keep them at this school? Like if it really came down to something we weren't agreeing on, I think we both have to, it's important to bring the pros of your situation and the cons to the table and really just looking at, okay, and be open. Like I'm stubborn. So I don't always like to be open. So if I say, (laughs) okay, we got invited to somebody's house, like, let's go. I'm the extrovert. Brian's the introvert. Maybe it's like, okay, you know what? Let's just let's go this time. But like the next week, next weekend, we'll just lay low for the weekend and chill out because that's something that he needs. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's all uh, it is sometimes, you know, that give and take. Right. Right. Brian doesn't like to use compromise, but it it really is. It's 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 really or or it's an understanding of what compromise means, not necessarily using the word. Yeah, I I think when, when I think of compromise, I think somebody's giving some, oh, okay. somebody's losing in a compromise that's why okay. i don't like yeah. to use the word compromise but mm-hmm. okay you know you're just changing your expectations i yeah. guess i don't know there's a lot a lot of ways that you could think of it i just don't, i just don't yeah. necessarily <laughs> like the word compromise because somebody's losing in a compromise yeah that's true. yeah yeah I, it was weeks ago I, I said something on that terms and and kind of referring to uh compromise whereas it's a win-win situation so we just have to change our perspective of you wow. know our outlook mm-hmm. on what that means and it's not that somebody has to lose in order for another person it's to win, win which we've been taught our life it's more of right. okay this is what works best right now and i may not agree with it but you're right this is probably what we need to do in the long run so yeah yeah but even yeah, in I, that i think you're you're agreeing so it's not really a compromise at that point right right so, exactly you're right right exactly so just understanding that absolutely great stuff. Absolutely. Anything else, Tanya? And, and like you were going to say. Okay. Oh, okay. No, this, you know, is, you know, this, is, this has been great. Um, <laughs> I guess we can we can share about our podcast. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. That's okay. 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 We were yeah. coming to that. Yeah. yeah. We sure oh, were. oh, okay. Sorry. So, okay. I thought we were... so we'll have them, we'll have them cut out this part right here. <laughs> All right, Jason. <laughs> so we have the host here of Disrupt the Everyday Podcast. Guys, tell us a little bit about your podcast and what you guys discuss on it. And tell us everything where they can get in touch with you, how they can find out the information, all of that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. So the Disrupt the Everyday podcast was something that we created just to kind of help people who are, well, really, we're everyday people trying to help other everyday people navigate everyday things. So Disrupt the Everyday was really kind of founded on that. So we have we talked to a lot of different guests about different topics, whether it be finance, uh, relationships like we're talking about today, uh, ch- parenting, uh, entrepreneurship, it, it's kind of a broad spectrum. So, you know, a lot of it is things that we want to learn about ourselves. Uh, but, you know, we, we also take the approach right. of just trying to learn, trying to learn about other things that maybe are not of interest to us necessarily, but it's going to help somebody else. And then we just like sharing that on a weekly basis. So that, w- that was kind of what it was founded on. The, the reason why we started hosting it together, I already host two podcasts that are focused on, you know, security and healthcare security. And I wanted to host a third one that was not talking about security. And when I gave Tanya that idea, she knows how much time it takes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, she yeah. said, okay, well, if we're going to do this, we'll do it together. And this is, you know, this is the approach that we'll take. So that, and it's just been a great way for us to kind of share. And I'm sure, you know, you can kind of uh, relate to that as well, doing this together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just more ways to spend being together. More yep. ways. <laughs> well, we're together all the time. We're together 24 seven. Yeah. So. We do everything together. Yeah, pretty much. We never uh-huh. escape each other. <laughs> we're pretty much, I think we're pretty much just becoming like yeah. one person. Yeah, pretty just much. Like a sink, just, <laughs> so, and so, Tanya, uh, tell us all the places we can um, get your podcast. Like the name sure. of it again, your website, if you have anything, any information where they can actually go and go to and see it. Sure. So you can find us on Facebook under mm-hmm. Dis- Disrupt the Everyday Podcast. And we have a Facebook 
page in a group and as well on Instagram, Disrupt the Everyday and our website, DisruptTheEveryday.com. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. All right. So we need to disrupt the everyday. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Get right? Yes. And get a lot of things. Yeah. Well, it, we, it was a pleasure having yes, you was. guys on as a guest. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. coming on and sharing so much knowledge and information. Um, I, I know for sure that it will help some couples out there. For the sure. only thing is they have to listen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> yes. have to be open for it. <laughs> yes. You yes. The most important information part of communication is listening. Yes. Way Absolutely. easier than reading. Way easier yeah. than reading. <laughs> Go on. No excuses. Just, right. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And and our uh, podcast is even on YouTube. So if they like to see and hear, it's even easier. Right. It's, it's stimulating you all of everything you need. So, um, again, thank you guys for thank coming you, on. Thank you guys you have so been a, much. a great guest. We hope to have you on again. You know, That's awesome. Part two, Thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah. We, you guys have to come back and tell us what your love languages were. Yeah, there you go. Right, yeah, so now, <laughs> now, we're, now so, we're on the hot seat. I have to actually read right, it now. Right, right. <laughs> so, Tanya, you can actually download it and listen to it so that he's not listening, he's not reading it by himself. And then there you, you guys can come together and let us know what your love languages were and how you've been actually using it. Because the whole there point of the love language is to find out, you know, what is it and, and um, speak your mate's love language. So, that yeah. has been great. It has. It's, it's nice. It opens up. Uh, it kind of opens up your relationship when you understand all these different, you know, facets. Oh, what like what why their you love like language this is in this. But you know, <clears throat> Tina's love language changes at times <laughs> and seasons. So you know, if I buy something today, that's not her love language. You know, so we we are we going with physical touch now? We back on this. <laughs> so, I think it. I think you know, a man wrote the book. Mm-hmm. You know, but he, men think differently. And they think that your love language, because someone asked him, will will our love language change? And he said, no, I think we all have a little bit of each one, but our dominant love language is the same. But I tend to think that our love languages change according to where our relationship is. So Mm -hmm. if right now in our relationship we're good, but we're not communicating, then I may need words of affirmation. Okay, right. or if we're communicating well and we're doing everything, but I feel as though I'm being neglected in, you know, intimacy, then I may need um, physical touch. Mm-hmm. So I think really it's where your relationship is that kind of help. Maybe for women, because we're you know we kind of change no, a little it, bit it, more. It, it it happened because we took the test um, a year apart. And our love language well, you, did not change. Your, he means we took it first and this time, and right? Then we came September back. and then we came right. back in the next October and took it and. <laughs> It, it was changed different. a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, like we flip flop between the two, but again, it's all about, it's all about where you are in your relationship and in your life and what your needs are. Yeah, so I think the, that's the way great. I answered the question the first time, I, I answered them slightly different because I didn't need this at this time. So yeah, so I, yeah, I think I think the love languages change. Yeah, but and some people say that they don't. Some people say this is my love language. It's always been this. It's gonna is going to always be this. So, but we're, we're definitely gonna get you back on again. To next time is gonna be talking about the love languages. You know, there I'm you thinking go. maybe yeah yeah. Yep. All right. So you know, panel session. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we'll have a panel session with all, all of our couples to come back and talk about the love language. Oh. Yeah, so Tanya, wonderful. you have to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> but no pressure, Tanya. No pressure. <laughs> but that's a good I thing because you you can do it while the kids are down for napping. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. I must admit because I think I listened to it. Yeah. I don't think I I, I actually yeah. sat we, down. We took and a road trip to Mississippi too, and yeah, we listened to it all over there. Basically, yeah. it takes too much time. So, sometimes you know I don't even know how Brian gets his time. He has all this job he has three podcasts and he still has time to read and four kids <laughs> yeah. we need to get him on a, superman on time. there Let's you get go him on right. time management yeah. Jeez. yeah that's that's one we're gonna <laughs> yeah I, that's, that's the other big thing you use the calendar right like put family things in the calendar as as you know as cliche not not even cliche that'll sound weird to some people but mm-hmm. if it's important uh I, I would say put it in your calendar to make sure that you're actually going to follow through and do it you know, if it you is, use it your is, calendar, it is I use my outlook calendar be- religiously. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is cliche, and people go, "Yeah, I hear that all the time." But really, that really is the same. And it's better than a spur of the moment, and that you don't know really, what your time is, yeah. and all that other stuff. So, yeah. But you help. It helps you to stay on point and organized. That really is is important too. Brian, thanks for bringing that part up. Okay, yeah, <laughs> somebody here likes to use a calendar. Not so much me, but hey, you know. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say, Jason, did you do this? Did you? And he'll go, oh, I say, you know, uh, yeah, you know it's I meant, so funny. I meant to do that. Right. It's so funny because when, when the smartphones first came out, like years and years ago, <laughs> he would always tell me, Tina, put it in your phone. Yeah. Tina, like they, they it has that capability. Tina, yeah. put it in your phone. Yep. But mm-hmm. 
he never does it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so when when so to make it easier for him, that's why you guys go in and, and use the calendar, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love so the calendar. When you when you pick your date, it automatically comes up so that he doesn't have to. So we're yeah, gonna get him. Damn. He used to be really good about it. I don't know yeah, why. I don't know. Old age, I guess. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, the calendar's <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that really took a bright. He's like, wow. Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, getting older is a trip, too. <laughs> yeah, after 30 years of marriage, okay. <laughs> just really, I think it's really he's just trying to forget. I don't know. Yeah. You got to forget all, all the things you have to do? Sometimes. Sometimes it's a lot. Oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> hey, I, just, I just love putting stuff in my calendar because then I don't have to think about it. It's not going to be, it just frees my mind up. Yeah. I like it because Google will um, send you a, um, an agenda every day. So I have it to email me and say, Hey, it is your calendar. This is your appointment. I'm like, Oh, great. Yeah. I don't, and I haven't I'm missed anything. To go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I love he, it. He's missed a few things. <laughs> he doesn't know he missed them because he didn't put them in. <laughs> Some things that didn't make the cut on the calendar. He doesn't, he doesn't know he missed them because what? They weren't on his calendar. Yep. You, can, <laughs> you can't give me those fly by night, you know, suggestions like, baby, I need you to do this. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they don't make All the calendar. Right. Yeah. All right, so it has been great, and I think that sums up another episode. So, as always, we're, we're in, in it to win it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Loving Beyond the I Do podcast. Head over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Legendary Relationship or visit our website at legendaryrelationship.com. Till next time, remember to make every day count. Count.